This is the uh, Tennessee Algebra 1 practice test, uh, end of course practice test number 2. Question number 14. The question says which expression is equivalent to 2x squared minus 17x minus 30 over 3x squared minus 28x minus 20. I'm going to do this problem a few ways. The last way that I'm going to do it, I'm not proud that it works, but it does work. If for some reason you're seeing this in the classroom, hopefully the teacher will shut it off so your brain isn't wired to see it, but I am going to explain it anyway. Now, the first thing I need to do is factor out any common factors from the top or the bottom. 2 doesn't go into 17, 3 doesn't go into 28, so there's no common factors. So I'm going to factor them out in uh, using slide and divide. I'm going to do the top part first. So I've got 2x squared minus 17x minus 30. Now there's a couple ways that you could do it. You could do a factor list for 30, a factor list for 2, and just use check and guess until you get to the 17. I'm going to use slide and divide. That'd be where I'd slide the 2 over here and I end up with x squared minus 17x minus 60. Then I need to do a factor list for 60. So I do 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, and it appears that 3 and 20 will give me 17. Now the sign being negative here means that my answer choices, one's going to be plus and one's going to be minus. The minus in the first sign would indicate that the bigger number goes in front of the uh, the negative, it goes behind the negative, I should say. By the way, if this second sign, the one that I circled, was a plus, it would mean my answer here would be either x plus x plus or x minus x minus, and that part would be determined by the middle number as well. But I'm just saying they're different. So I'm going to look to see that I'm trying to get negative 17, so my 20 needs to go here, my 3 needs to go here. Uh, I should also note that if these signs and the answer are the same, so it's x plus and x plus, you're adding the factors to try to find the middle number. If they're different, you're subtracting. So 20, a negative 20 plus 3 gives me negative 17. So that's my top part. So I'm going to rewrite it. And I forgot a part. I don't know why I started to write this up there. So this actually works. Now I have to go back and divide by 2. Sorry about that. That's the whole, I did the slide part, I've got to do the divide part. Now I've got to divide both of these by 2. Uh, negative 20 divided by 2 does give me negative 10, so that one works. You should always reduce the fraction 2, but 3 divided by 2 is reduced. I'm not allowed to leave this part as a fraction, that can't happen. So what I do with it is kick this 2 back up in front. So I get 2x plus 3 over, or times, x minus 10. So I'm going to write this up there. Sorry about that. I didn't mean for that to be overly confusing. I have other videos on slide and divide if you're confused. Um, other slide and divide question. I'm going to do the denominator now. So in this case, I'm going to take the 3, slide it over. x squared minus 28x minus 60. Then I need to do factors of 60. So. And by the way, this sign tells me they're going to be different, so it's going to be x plus something and x minus something. So I do 1 and 60, 2 and 30, and there it is, because since their signs are different, 30 minus 2 gives me the 28, but I want it to be negative 28, so I'm going to do negative 30 here and x plus 2 there. Now that I did that, I need to go back and do the divide part. Uh, negative 30 divided by 3 is 10. Uh, the 2 thirds thing won't work, so I've got to kick this 3 back up, and I get 3x plus 2. So that goes on the bottom. They both have x minus 10 in them, so those cancel out. So the only thing left is 2x plus 3 time over 3x plus 2. So your answer to number 14 is going to be B. Now, that's a really kind of long process. It's a long question. It might be tiring and exhausting. It's still the best way to go about doing it. Now, if you're showing this in class, or I'm going to show you this cheap calculator method that I'm not proud of, but I did figure out that it works, and other people have shown me it too. So it wasn't like I thought of it. Anyway, now the reality is what I'm going to do is make sure my X term or my X value for graphing is set at something other than 0. If it is set at 0, it doesn't work. If it's something, go to the window, change the x and max and min to whatever, so negative 5 and 5, and then as long as I graph something to lock it in, so say I graph 2x plus 5, 
it would lock in negative 5 and 5, which means my x value would then be 5. So whatever, whatever. I'll even show you that that's the truth. I'm just going to do 50 and 50. And then I just graph something like this, and it should lock it in. So I'm going to quit really fast. Now my x value is at 50. But I don't want it to be 50. I like 10. So I'm just going to do something really quick. But I'm just showing you that's how you change the x value if you need to. You should have the x y and x min, or the x max and x min be the same thing, by the way. So I can quit. So now my x is back to 10 like I want it. The reality is you can get this answer without having to know how to do any math. The top and the bottom should be in separate parentheses. So just type in exactly what it says. 2x squared minus 17x minus 30. Close your parentheses. Then divide. 3x squared minus 28x minus 20. Close that parentheses. See how it divided the top by the bottom? I get some number. Oh, it's got a, a quit go to divide, which means I do have to change the window. If you get that, just go back in. This is one of the times when I actually have to change the window. That hasn't happened in like a decade. So go to y equals, graph it, clear it out, type in the same exact thing, hit enter, and it gives you a number. This number has no mathematical value whatsoever. All I'm going to do is write it somewhere. 0 0.7647, something like that. What I'm going to do is try to find an answer on the uh, in the answer choices that match it. And I'm going to make sure all of them, check all of them, because sometimes you get two that work, you pick the one that's the most broken down. So in this case, go back into it, and I'm going to type in 2x minus 3, close the parentheses, divide by 3x minus 2. Hit enter, and you can see these, this number and that I've been given and the answer I'm supposed to find are not the same, so x is, so a is out. Now I'll go back in and do the next one, which is what we expect it to be based on the math I did earlier. Divided by 3x plus 2. See how they match? So I can say with pretty uh, a reasonable level of certainty that yeah that works. Now let's try the other ones just in case sometimes they you get more than one that are correct and when you do you're gonna look for the thing that has the most numbers pulled out in front of it. This one probably won't happen because they have the same numbers pulled out in front but it is what it is. So divide 3x minus 10 see how it doesn't it doesn't match like it's supposed to that one doesn't work. I'm gonna try one more 2x plus 15 divided by 3x plus 10. It's not the same number. So you know that B is the correct answer. It's the only one that matches. I'm not saying I'm proud that that works, but it does work. So it is what it is. Use whatever you need to use to get your grade that you need to pass on to the next class. So good luck with that.